show you, let me show you something God showed me today. You hold your place there in John 19, and then I want you to go to, go to uh, 1 Thessalonians 4. Y'all believe in the rapture? You should. You should. I don't know who told you it's not going to happen. God said it is. And he did it in no uncertain terms, if you believe the Bible. And it don't, don't take much. I, I get tickled now that these people say, well, you know, the Bible says that, but it doesn't really mean that. What it really means is something else. I get so, t I get so tickled at that. Amen? Okay. Verse 16, 1 Thessalonians 4, 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Amen? And with the voice of the archangel, and with the uh, trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them where? In the clouds, to meet the Lord, where? So shall we ever be with the Lord. Now, where are we going? Where are we going? Going in the clouds? Are we going to hang out in the clouds? Boy, these clouds are nice. No, where are we going? Going to, going to be with the Lord. Turn to 1 uh, Corinthians 15. Take you on a little journey. I'm, I'm going to show you something. It just, I, and I, I want to tell you something. If you've ever, if you've listened to me for the last, I want to say 10 years, Okay, you've heard about a dozen verses come out of me almost every time I talk. Okay, one of, one of half a dozen, a dozen verses, I just spend a lot of time on. And what, what never ceases to amaze me is that a verse that I think I am so familiar with, and I know every square inch of it, and I know it inwards, upwards, downwards, backwards, frontwards, slantwards, I know everything about it, and then boom, God says, Take, look at this. And I go, oh, that is cool. 1 Corinthians 15, are you there? Say amen. 1 Corinthians 15, 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised, incorruptible, and we shall be changed changed amen amen turn to acts chapter one acts chapter one oh i love it i should have just worked this up today and just come out and throw it in fact i may i may just walk all over this tonight acts chapter one verse nine when he had spoken these things while they beheld he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight and while they steadfastly looked toward heaven, as he went up, what direction? Up. Behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner, as ye have seen him go into heaven. Amen. What are we going to see? We're going to see him come back. He's going to come back in the clouds. We're going to meet him in the air. Turn to Matthew 24. Matthew 24. Mm, 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 mm. Verse 30. Then shall appear. I'm moving fast for you now. Okay, you want me to slow down? If I slow down, it would be to 09. Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see... The Son of Man coming where? In the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Because he left in a cloud, right? Left in a cloud, coming back in one. And when we meet the dead in Christ, we're meeting them in the clouds. Okay? And um, so what we leave here, we're going up. And the Bible says that we are going to be judging angels right that's what it says we're going to be in judgment over angels okay what no you're not you should be judging angels okay and we're gonna we're gonna visit boy i wish who's got some of where they can look up a verse for me real fast come on melissa shoot it out there's a verse in psalms that talks about beautiful is mount zion in the sides of the north it's in psalms so look for beautiful 
Zion, sides of the north. Okay, those verses, it'll get you there. And I'm doing this for a reason. So Matthew 24 again. Uh, shall, they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, and he shall send his angels. With a great sound of a what? Trumpet. What are we waiting to hear? Waiting to hear the trumpet sound, right? And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Uh, turn to uh, 2 Kings. Turn to 2 Kings. Chapter 2. 2 Kings chapter 2. Charge. You remember when we used to do that? Hold your Bible like that. And they say, charge. And you flip that Bible over and try to find that verse. 2 Kings chapter 2. Is Elijah dead? Did Elijah die? No. Mm -mm. Did Enoch die? No. Uh -uh. Didn't die. Now watch this. Verse um, 9. In 2 Kings chapter 2, And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass as they still went on and talked that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into where? Heaven. Where's he at right now? He's in heaven. Amen? So, the Bible teaches the, trumpet, the tr trumpet's going to sound. Paul said it's the last trump. So i got to believe what Paul said. So the trumpet's going to sound. Dead in Christ first. Paul said it twice. He wasn't kidding, the dead in Christ are going to rise first, then we which are alive and remain. Uh, we're going to meet the Lord in the air. He's coming in the clouds. We're going to meet him there. And then here we have the picture here of Elijah being taken up into a whirlwind um, and, and a chariot. The Bible said that the chariots of the Lord are 10,000 or 20,000, even thousands of angels. Okay. So literally, angels are what bore Elijah up into heaven. But anyway, he went there. Okay, now, when you got saved, did any one of you say, God, I'm coming up there, and you better get my throne ready, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit on it, and you tell all those angels, when I get there, I'm in charge, and... God, you just might as well get used to me being like you for all of eternity because that's how it's going to be. Is that how you did it, George? That's not how I did it. I was bawling my eyes out on a little altar there at Free Will Baptist Youth Camp, Niangua, Missouri. And I asked God, I said, God, will you let me into heaven? God, will you take me? God, will you have me? God, I'll be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord for all of eternity. God, I don't have to have much. I just don't, I just don't want to die and go to hell. I want to go to heaven when I die. Sound familiar? Amen? Do you believe that a thief is out to steal what God has promised you? I read it like I had never read this verse before. And it went... What, did you find that verse? Psalm 48, turn there. I've got to show you this one, then I'll take you to where I'm talking about. Psalm 48, 2. Beautiful for situation. The joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north. You know what that means? That means, according to Ezekiel 1, the north is the direction that God is showing you that heaven's in. Okay? If, I don't know how this started this way, or has it always been this way, that throughout history, north is always what direction? Up. Uh, when you go to Arkansas, you don't say, yeah, I'm going up to, up to, down, up to south Arkansas. 
Okay, I'm going up to the south. We don't say that. It's up is north. And Ezekiel 1, when, when he saw the throne coming, when he saw the chariot of God coming, it was coming out of the north. Okay, so the Mount Zion that he's talking about here um, is not that city there in Jerusalem. It's the holy city up in heaven. Where would we say, what chapter was that? 46? Huh? 48, so I lost track already. Beautiful for situation. The joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. How you doing, darling? God is going to let us dwell there. That's our mountain. That's our mountain. Amen? That it, God's going to let us dwell there. If you read Hebrews, he talk, that's what he talks about. The rest that God's going to give us is what we have up in heaven, and we have a better kingdom and a better offering than what they had in the Old Testament. Okay? We have that holy city, um, Jerusalem. I can't remember what Hebrews said, but he's talking about that country up in heaven, it, which is our inheritance. God's going to give us that. Somebody wants to steal it. If you want to understand what goes on in your life on a daily basis, then I believe in, I used to believe in some pretty wacky conspiracy theories until I really started getting serious about the Bible. Then I started to only believe the ones that are in the Bible. And there's one great big gigantic huge conspiracy. Isaiah 14. Turn there. Because I, I'm going to show you this. I never, I never saw it this way before. Maybe somebody else, maybe there's books in an old library somewhere where some great man of God 150 years ago, God showed him this and he wrote it down in his notes and it's stuck in a library somewhere and no one's reading it. But I'm just, man, this blessed my heart today. Isaiah 14. Who's Lucifer? Christine, who's Lucifer? Satan. Yes, Caleb. Yeah, yeah. He was, he was, used to be the anointed cherub that covereth, okay? Um, the modern scholars now, they all say that that is a poor translation. It's an awful, terrible translation. And all the new Bibles here do not call him Lucifer. They say morning star or day star. Who's the day star? Who's the morning star? Christ. Okay? That in itself is a poor translation. The Hebrew word halal just simply means bright, shining. Okay? And so what, what, the, what I think the translators did was they were using the name Lucifer, which means bearer of light, light bearer, bringer of light, that's what Lucifer means. Like, it's related to phosphorus, okay? You, and so it brings light, okay? In 2 Corinthians 11, Paul said, And no marvel, for Satan himself is what? Transformed into an angel of light. Angel is a messenger of light. By the way, now I better not say, there's a story that came out today, and it's over my head, but... I can't even get into it. It had, it had, I will tell you that they're finding a way, a newer way to use light. And they kept saying, we are using light as a messenger. We're using light as a messenger. And I'm going, they've been reading the Bible, haven't they? Oh no, uh-uh. Anyway, it has to do with computers. But anyway, so where was I before I went on that little tirade? Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Isaiah 14, 12, calling him Lucifer, is a double witness, or the second witness to what Paul said in 2 Corinthians 11, when he referred to him being transformed into an angel of light. The two phrases equal each other. One says, bringer of light, the other one is a messenger of light, an angel of light. They both mean literally the same thing. Christopher. Somebody who is named Christopher, what does that name mean? Christopher Columbus knew this. He wrote in his diaries on his way to the new world, he wrote, my name is Christopher, and I believe that I am being sent to carry the light of Christ to the, to the isles. That's what he said. That's what he wrote in his diaries. Okay? 
Christopher means the bringer of the one who brings Christ, the one who's carrying the message of Christ to people. Okay? Lucifer. Anyway, that has nothing to do with what I'm going to tell you. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? That's not Jesus. It's not the day star. It's not the morning star. Christ did come from heaven, but he wasn't thrown out. He didn't fall. Okay? How art thou cut down the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou sent in thine heart. Five things here that he says. Look at the very first one. What's the first thing he says he's going to do? He's going to ascend into heaven. Uh, excuse me. That's where I'm going. Okay? It's kind of like when you finally let the kids out of the class to go outside or to go eat. Do they ever get in a race as who's first out the door? Okay? I'm first! And then one of them sees somebody go out the door first and they're going, they're going to get my stuff. Boom! Out the door. Okay? So first thing I saw was, I will ascend into heaven and I'm going, wait a minute, that's where I'm going. But I never said to God, God, I'm coming up there. I never said that. Look at his arrogance. Look at his pride. Second thing he said was what? I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. What did we just say the Bible said we're going to be doing? We're going to be judging angels. We're going to be sitting on a throne over the angels. That God, we are made lower than the angels, the book of Psalms says. God is going to magnify us to literally be the body of his son, Jesus Christ. We will, we will be exalted above the angels of heaven. Look at what he said he was going to do. I will exalt myself above the stars of God. And I'm looking at this and I'm going, excuse me, Mr. Lucifer, that's what I'm supposed to get. Then he said, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. The sides of the north, the reason why that verse in Psalm says exactly the sides of the north. Where Mount Zion is. Look what he said, the mount of the congregation. The mount of the congregation is Mount Zion in the sides of the north in heaven. And he said, that's going to be my mountain. And I'm going, but God said that I could have that. You see what I'm getting at here? Look at the next thing he said. What's the next thing he said? I will send above the heights of the clouds. We're going to the clouds and then above the clouds to heaven because that's where Elijah is. He went to heaven. The fifth thing that Lucifer says is, I will be like the most high. Colossians, or was it? I can't remember. But what put me onto this was that verse where the Bible says that Christ, when he comes, when he receives us, He's going to change our vile body into the image of His glorious body. We, when we shall see Him, we shall know Him because what? We will be like Him. What does that say? I will be what? Excuse me, Mr. Devil. You're looking at my stuff. And you're not getting it. Amen? I've had enough of the devil take stuff away from me. I've had enough of it. He's taken joy out of my life. He's taken people out of my life. He's taken, he's taken health away from my life. He has taken stuff. And if he is allowed to continue, he will just keep taking and keep taking and keep taking. And there is no limit to what he's going to take from us. You go ask Job about that. He took Job's kids and killed them all. Took all Job's wealth that he worked his life for. See, this stuff, wealth is a bad word now because people have drug it through the mud. But I'm telling you, when you work and build something all your life and the devil comes in and takes it away, it hurts you. 
it, it makes you angry. And the devil thought that, watch, what now do you, do you see now, does it make sense or does it help you understand better why Satan was trying to get at Job the way he was? Do you remember the parable about, um, I can't remember all of it, maybe somebody can find it, but the, finally the, the master of the land said, I will send my only son. They will listen to him. And when the son got there, they got together and they said, well, why don't we kill him? And then we can have what? The inheritance. Does that make sense now? Because when we get to heaven, we will be like Jesus. That's what, that's Bible words. Okay? And I, when I was going through this, I mean, it hit me while I was talking, George, on camera. Boom, boom. Okay? And I'm going, okay, i got to be careful here, because then somebody's, somebody's always picking me apart, and they're going to say, he thinks he's going to be like Lucifer, because they're going to do that. But I started going through it, and I started pulling verses out of my mind, and I'm going, no, the Bible says this, the Bible says this, the Bible says this, the Bible says this. And everything about what Lucifer declared that in his arrogance, he did, he's, not, he's not like us. We ask God for this. And God gave, gave it as a free gift to us. Lucifer knows nothing about free gift nothing. He steals and takes what he wants. Like people that we know. Where do you think they get it from? They're their father the devil. They just take what they want. And they'll keep taking. And so the devil, if God allows him to, he will take away all your family. He will take away everything you've worked your life for. And then, when he can't get you to curse God and die, then he'll start gnawing on your health. And he starts chipping away at us. And if he can't kill us in a young body, then slowly but surely, he's going to gnaw away at our flesh and devour it and destroy it and steal it away from us. God gave us his body. But he doesn't stop there. And he won't stop there. He wants to steal and take what God has already given to His only begotten Son, and His Son now has declared the decree that all of us who are partakers with Christ are going to be joint heirs with Christ, and so we are going to ascend into heaven, we are going to be exalted above the stars of God and judge and rule over angels, we are going to be sitting on Mount Zion in the sides of the north because that's where Jesus lives and that's where we're going to be and we're going to be like Jesus and the Sermon on the Mount. He's going to be sitting on that mountain and we're going to be sitting there listening to him like this. And Jesus, that is really great. Jesus, man, I love you. Oh, Jesus. Go to the uh, Precious Moments Chapel down in southern Missouri. Have you been there? Go. I re Volted. I told my wife, I want no part of this bunch of... And I went in there, and the back mural of this chapel, this guy, Sam Butcher, had painted. He had painted all these little precious moments, Bible scenes, all over this chapel, like Michelangelo. Only he did it with a real Bible, okay? So he draws... The, the, mural, the back mural is a, is a picture of heaven. And it has these little precious moments, kids, you know, going into heaven. And there's stories about some of them, about how kids that, they, that he knew that died, you know. And so he drew them in there. And the only character in that whole place that's not drawn with that big, you know, round head precious moment style is Jesus. And he has Jesus sitting in heaven and all these little round headed children sitting there while he's teaching them. And, I'm, and I get in there and I'm going... <laughs> I'm Mr. Theologian, right? I'm going, that's not how it's going to be. And the Holy Ghost is like, suffer the little children to come into me and forbid them not for... And I was going... And Lisa was going, you okay? Yeah, there's nothing wrong with me. <clears throat> but it just hit me. We're going to sit at Mount Zion with Jesus. We're going to be above the heights of the clouds. God's going to give us a body likened unto the body of His Son, who is the Most High God. And we're going to be there forever. And Satan says, 
I will take that away from every last one of you. Every war that you see in the Bible over land is a picture of that. The battle of Armageddon is for that very reason. And then Satan's bound for a thousand years. And then what does Satan do? The, the very split second that he's allowed back out of the bottomless pit in Revelation, what is the first thing he does? He goes and he gathers another army to try to fight God again because he wants what he said in Isaiah 14. And the truth of it is, that doesn't belong to him. God promised it to us and I'm not going to let him have it. Every battle that I fight, every battle I have, this makes sense to me, every battle I have fought, I now see I was fighting this right here. Every battle that I will fight from here to Armageddon and a thousand years after that one is because of this right here. He wants what God promised me as my, the reason I'm serving him as God promised me that inheritance. I'm not serving him to earn the inheritance. I already got it. I'm serving him because he gave that to me. And I don't have to earn it. I've already got it. I'm just going to serve the master who had pity and compassion on me to give me that. And I'm tired of the devil stealing stuff. What he takes on this side of heaven, maybe I can't do that do much about. But I'm going to be coming back with Jesus in Revelation 19 on a white horse. And I'm not going to have no devil taking my eternal inheritance away. May the God of heaven bruise Satan under your feet shortly. Romans chapter 16. Okay? If you're fighting a battle right now. And you feel like the devil's just eating you alive. It's for this reason right here kill you, get rid of you, destroy you, and destroy Jesus, he can have what, what was supposed to go to us. He can have it. Okay? Destroy the Son, destroy God's people, he can have that. But folks, when we've already decided that when we lose everything down here, and we will, our hope is that we have that one place that we can go to after here to make it all worth it. If we don't get that, what else is there for us? There's nothing. It's kind of like why I preach so much about America and our responsibility in this world. Where else can you go that you can carry a gun to protect your family and to protect yourself, walking around, you can go in the capital of the state of Missouri and carry a, a gun, and they can't say anything to you about it because it's your right, it's your God-given right. Okay? Europeans don't understand that about us. They say, well, that's your answer to everything is fighting it. Yeah, well, when we get tired of you guys trying to rule over us, we're going to shoot back. Okay? And America is the last place to go for the liberties that we have. You can't even carry a pocket knife in Kenya. I could have got arrested. <laughs> okay? And I'm saying this. The battle you're fighting tonight, the battle you're fighting today, the battle you've been fighting this week, some of the battles you fought in the past, and maybe some things that might come back around on you again, this, this is it right here. It's all about what God promised you. And Satan said, I'm going to steal that. But look at, you know, I read verses 12 through 14, but I don't read verse 15 much. That Yet thou shalt be brought down to the hell to the sides of the pit. It's not going to work. We have been guaranteed to win the battle if we stick with the captain of the host. Stick with him. Okay? Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world, people. Okay? You take that home, run with it. All right, now, turn your Bibles to Job chapter 30. I'm just kidding. 
I could. One of these days, I'm going to. One of these days, I'm going to get in the mood and I'm going to preach till midnight. You guys just have to hang with me or go home, get some rest, and come back, all right? I will. Let's stand to our feet. Uh, I was going to. I, I made. I'll probably try to tie this in next Wednesday with what I was going to say tonight. Um, the reason why I wanted to show you this, you study this out. I've talked about it before, but some people, you know, we forget things or whatever. Maybe we need to hear it again. Some haven't heard it before. But a while back, God showed me this, and it just was a real blessing to me. I used to be, I used to, you know, have this false idea of what the devil is like and what devils are like. And the Bible specifically describes Satan as a beast, as a dragon, as a serpent, okay? Not as a human. Not as someone who thinks like us and sees things like us. He is a beast and he has a beast nature. And um, there are things that you can do to absolutely nullify and minimize the effect of the devil working in your life, in your family, in your church, in, in your area, your little pocket of the universe. There are things that you can do to make sure the devil does not do what he set out to do in your life. And it's pretty simple stuff. But Pilate, John chapter 19, Pilate called Jesus. He said, Behold the man. Okay? Now this falls along with his ideas of the chief, and the, he's the bishop, and he's the head of everything. But out of all the people in the earth who are called men, Jesus is the man. Not a man. The man. Okay? And we're going to take that, we're going to apply it to scriptures, we're going to show what purpose that serves and why that is. And it's real simple. Snakes don't like men. Which works out really well. Because I don't like snakes. Amen? You can have them. Father in heaven, thank you Lord for revelation. Thank you Lord God for, Lord the things you teach us are free. You don't charge us for this. You don't make us pay money for this. And this is deep stuff, God. Who are we? Who are we? be able to understand anything out of your word. Who are we, Lord, to receive bread from heaven? And Father, you promised us that you would use us foolish people to confound the wise and the weak of us, Lord, to bring down the strong ones. So Father, we thank you, Lord, that you made us weak, that you made us poor and despised, and you made us to where we're the offscouring of the world. Because, Lord, you then take those people and you give them a crown of life. And you crown them, Lord, and adorn them with wisdom. And glorify them, Lord, with knowledge and understanding of your word. Father, what deep things still await us, Lord, in verses we've read all our lives. And yet there's always one more thing we can know about it. Father, help us, dear God, we're on a journey. And that journey, Lord, is a journey of discovery. Father, we want to spend our lives wanting to know more and more and more about this Bible that we carry with us every day. Lord, bless its words tonight. Let this be, Lord, a comfort and a blessing to somebody. Lord, somebody out there needs it. Somebody here tonight needed it. I pray, dear God, Lord, that you would show them, Lord, what the devil's trying to do. And Lord, it'll make them mad. When they get good and mad, they'll stand up and they'll fight back. And they'll say, devil, you're not getting it. Thank you, God, for loving us and being so kind to us. We love you in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, amen. amen.